And so right now for people who are poor, it's because they actually don't see reality for what it is. And this is what I recommend. Just get used to living below your means. 64% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck because they commit one of the worst financial mistakes. So today I'm going through step by step the eight things do what with your paycheck. Poor people are not living in reality. There's so much advice out there. In fact, because there's so much advice out there, I hesitated on making this video. But then I was presented with an opportunity to experiment with $30,000 of my own money. And because I'm that guy, dedicated to bringing you experiments that we can both learn from, I had to do it. I think one of the reasons why 64% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck is because all of this advice out there, it's not easy. It's quite complicated, for me included, and I'm not even American. It's hard to do. In theory, yes, okay, eight steps that I can follow, fantastic. But eight steps, I, I think it's too much. Even three steps, I think it could be too complicated or discouraging for a lot of people. How about just one step? Is there something like that? Which would you rather do? Spend your own money or spend somebody else's money? Somebody else's. How come? Because I'm not spending my money. Why don't you want to spend your money? It's yours. Because I want lots of money. That was my seven-year-old. And what she said seems to be very common in terms of what I hear when I talk to kids about money. She never wants to spend her own money. She only wants to spend her dad's money. She loves saving, but she also loves spending my money. And because she never spends her own money, her money keeps growing. And so it got me thinking, maybe that's the single most important rule when it comes to building wealth. Never spend your own money. But how? In January this year, I, I got this letter in the mail, an exclusive offer for you. Save on interest with a balance transfer. At some point in your life, I think you've seen this before, an offer from your credit card bank, an offer to pay off an existing credit card debt with a low interest balance transfer. Often this balance transfer interest rate is zero or close to zero. By the way, if you like this type of content, please leave a comment below, push that like button, or even subscribe because it doesn't seem like much, but it really helps me develop this channel and allows me to bring you more content that is hopefully entertaining and informative. So this was my ticket to test whether or not it is possible to never spend your own money. I totally forgot to mention that the point of the experiment is to see if I can use this offer, not as it is intended. Smells good. Yeah, passes the sniff test. I don't carry a balance on my credit cards. Um, at the end of each month, I pay the balance off, so the balance of that credit card is zero. This is very important for this experiment because the point is to build up wealth, not to pay down debt. I mean, if you do have credit card debt, the prerequisite to building wealth should be to pay down debt first, especially credit card debt. So to run this experiment, I need two pots of cash. And this is a real experiment with real money. The first pot of money is my own money because as my seven-year-old said, don't spend my own money. The second pot of money is the money I'll be borrowing from the bank via the balance transfer offer. But how much money are we talking about? So let's use a nice round number like $10,000. That's pretty close to what my family uses in terms of expenses a month. And so sometimes it's a little more than that, but for the simplicity of math, let's keep it to 10,000. That's $10,000 of cash a month that I need for three months, which is $30,000. $30,000 of my own money. But since I don't want to use my own money, I then borrow from the balance transfer offer by transferring $30,000 from that balance transfer visa into another credit card to hold that credit. And I can debit from it every time I use that other credit card. So my other credit card essentially is transformed into a debit or cash card until the $30,000 is spent. So the question becomes, by me not using my own $30,000, against my expenses, and instead using the balance transfer offer and creating a debit card or a cash card, will I be able to build up a little bit of wealth during that three month period? So let's calculate what it costs to use this balance transfer. $719.40 is then the cost of using this balance transfer offer during this three month period. So then my goal becomes, can I increase my cash pot of $30,000 by more than $714.40? 
If I put the cash pot into a savings account for three months that offers 5% annual interest, I'll make $375 during those three months. So that's about half of what I'm paying to use this balance transfer. So that doesn't work. It's better to use my own cash at this point. So instead, let's put my cash into a very popular S&P 500 tracked ETF. I'm in Canada, so I bought the Canadian dollar converted version of Vanguard VOO, which is VFV. And this is what happened between the months of January to March. So in about three months, with the $30,000 of my own money that I didn't spend on expenses and rather invested it in the S&P 500, I made over $3,000. That is well above the $700 or so in the cost of borrowing, which makes it a no-brainer to always save my own money and invest it and use the bank's money to do everything else. In fact, actually, you can use the bank's money to also save and invest. Okay, for anybody who is screaming at your phone or a computer because I only took the experiment to three months and not four months or whatever other months, because if I did do it for four months, I would have gone into deep into April, and April was a really bad month in the market. And so I, my profits would have been around $500 to $700 less. That's absolutely true. The market is obviously volatile. But if you rinse and repeat this for for a long period of time with a larger sample size and you use the power of the average, meaning you invest in relatively safe investment products like S&P 500 tracked ETFs, you'll most likely always come out on top. So as long as the interest rates that you're paying on these balance transfers are relatively low. And this is just one method to leverage the philosophy of never using your own money. There's so many ways out there. I think the most common one that everyone knows about is buying rental property using leverage through a loan through the bank and you use essentially 0% of your own money and you build up equity and wealth. So there you have it. I guess it's true. The kids are right. If you want to build wealth, your money is not for spending. Your money is for saving and investing. See you next time. <music>